Good morning, family. Good morning, Ms. Barnes. Good morning, Marlene. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 9.30. You can get started, Liz. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Liz Kukla. I'm the secretary of the Board of Zoning Appeals. And I'm going to read the preamble for you this morning, October 11th, 2021. In compliance with notification requirements of the city's open meeting law in section 101.021 of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to take to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or the facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Please note that call-in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We have provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak on a particular case via our website and email. All requests to speak on a particular matter have been considered. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comments on a particular matter. Next screen, Maurice. All right, I will call the roll if that's all right, Madam Chair. Please go ahead. Thank you. Ms. Barnes? Barnes here. Ms. Brown, I don't know if I see her. Hey, Brown. Here. Sorry. Thank you. Ms. Bath? I'm present. Ms. Britt? Here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Okay. So, Madam Chair, we have one postponement request for calendar number 21 145 regarding 11409 Wade Park Avenue. Shabad of University Circle owner proposed to erect a three story frame and masonry rear addition to an existing three story single family residence. The architect has asked for a postponement at this time as he is. Uh, he needs more time to meet with the community and the council person. This is the second postponement. The first postponement was made by the council person to allow time for community review. And if it's all right with you, Madam Chair, I think we should push this out to uh, the middle of December. That would be actually the second week of December, December 13th. Um, that works for me or we got room on that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, it looks like we have Councilman Kelly here today. So uh, did we want to go ahead and move to that case first? One moment, Madam Chair. Uh, Liz, I, I didn't hear you call my name, but this is Member Brown and I am present. Thank you. For the record, I believe she did, Ms. Brown. So no worries, we saw you. Um, yeah, uh, <clears throat> I didn't see him, so good eyes there, uh, Maurice, but yeah, we can go ahead and move to his. All right, as a courtesy to Councilman uh, Kelly, we will proceed to calendar number 21. Dash 158 as our first case of the day. This is 4200 Bushner Avenue. And Michael Santiago, owner, proposes to erect a 36 foot by 28 foot one story reverse gable detached three bay garage 
in an A1 one family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinance as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there is one, which is section 337.23C, which states that an accessory garage shall not exceed 900 square feet and the applicant is proposing 1,008 square feet. And to you, Member Brown, for the oath. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. Good morning. I'm swearing in all present for this case. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, say I do, state your name and your address one at a time. I do, Kevin Kelly, 5904 Park Ridge Avenue. I do, Jamie Lucas Kutsar, 26 Innes Avenue. I do, Phil Henry here on behalf of Ms. Judy Repko, uh, 4123 Jermaine Avenue. Madam Chair, our persons are sworn in. Thank you. History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There has been no change in the zoning since 1929. In our Building and Housing Records Administration Office, I found that in 1941, a permit was issued to direct to erect a brick dwelling with a garage. There are no variances on file for this address. And in the more recent history, I found that in September of this year, a violation notice was issued to the property uh, for a stop work order regarding a garage and a fence being built without uh, approval. And that's all that I have, Madam Chair. Looks like these workers have been working there for a while, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting an area variance from the accessory garage maximum square footage requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Okay, so who's the uh, spokesperson for this case? We have Michael Santiago. Michael Santiago. Um, Hello. Yeah, I don't. Did he swear in? I don't remember his name. I did okay. not hear him swear in, Madam Chair. Not, yeah, Mr. Santiago, you need to swear in, so we're going to swear you in first. Okay. Uh, Maurice, I need the language again. Oh, sure. Sorry. Uh, we got to go all the way back to the beginning. <clears throat> there you go. Thank you. Mr. Santiago, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? <laughs> Please raise your name. Excuse me. Raise your hand. Uh, <laughs> state I do your name and your address. Uh, I do. Michael Santiago, 4200 Buchner Avenue. Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you. Hold on a second. I just hit the wrong button. <laughs> okay, Mr. Santiago, go ahead and talk about the the your case and the one variance you need that's uh, listed here. Uh, first. Uh, did you did you want me to show the pictures first or the, you know, your, your diagrams, or did you want me to leave this up first, Mr. Santiago? Uh, you can put the diagram up there. Okay. Very good. Go ahead. Uh, the uh, garage is actually 945 square feet of floor space, first off. And uh, so I, I know that's within like 45 square feet of the allotted size. 
Uh, as you can see from the picture of my house, I do a huge Halloween display. That's probably about 20% of my Halloween display for the neighborhood. So some of this garage is going to be storage in the roof to be able to store all this stuff without me having to spend uh, hundreds of dollars a month on storage, a storage unit. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm trying to build a garage a little bigger. Uh, also, my truck is 25 feet long. So by going 28 feet deep, uh, you can see in this picture that the three vehicles are in the parking spot and there's not a whole lot of room left over. And uh, the front and back of my truck has approximately 16 inches from front to back. So this is why I'm asking for a variance. And this is before you put a two inch door in there. So it would actually be about 14 inches from the front to the back to be able to pull my truck into the garage. And uh, Mr. Santiago, did you have an existing garage here before? And, yes. Okay. And you, you took it down to make one a little bigger. Yes. The okay. other garage was actually pretty, it looked good, but uh, as in most of the garages on the street, they didn't do a good footer under them. Most of them are, are uh, kind of rotting out from the bottom because the, the base of the garage is sitting on, on dirt. So, uh, it, it was just not not a good structure to be up. Mr. Santiago, are you building this garage yourself or do you have a general contractor? Doing it? I'm, I'm building this garage. I've been in construction over 30 years. Uh, I'm a union journeyman carpenter. Uh, so, I, I mean, it, a garage is a pretty basic build. Okay, thank you. Um, who else do we have signed up here? We um, have Mr. Mr. Henry with his hand raised. Okay. Um, I'm going to hear from Jamie first and then go to Mr. Henry. Hi, I'm Jamie with Old Brooklyn Community Development Corporation. Uh, we've looked at the um, plans and uh, noted that there are 10 letters of support from the community. We know there's one opposition. Uh, but given um, what he wants to do and the size of the lot, we have no opposition to this variance. We are Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Henry, uh, can go ahead. Thank you. Um, from what I saw from the the ordinance, it's supposed to be 800 square feet. When I'm looked at when I looked at 337.23, he's asking for. Uh, approximately 208 square feet beyond what is what the ordinance says. Um, <clears throat> from my understanding, from talking with Ms. Kukla, I don't know that there was much detail at all in the in the um, permit. The permit basically said to build a garage and to build uh, put in a fence. And there was a stop work order on the 22nd of September. Um, asked to put to submit three sets of plans by a registered architect, a registered professional engineer. I don't know that that was ever submitted, but the building has been uh, started, as you can tell by the pictures. There is not only a footer that's been installed, but they've started to build uh, blocks uh, blocks for the walls. Um, my concerns are one: I don't know much about uh, what procedure he's followed so far, but you know it's very it's a very large building. It's very close to my client's property. And I'm not sure that there's been a whole lot of formalities followed so far, such as whether or not they, uh, well, he's built the site. You can see the size is already laid out. I don't know if anybody from the city uh, inspected the, the uh, footer that's been poured or, or uh, because that's something that should have been done before we got the permit. But it seems as though a lot of the, uh, a lot of what Mr. Santiago is doing is putting the cart before the horse and that he's building uh, in spite of the stop work order that was issued in September. and now asking for a variance. The problem is there's no hardship in following the 800 square foot uh, ordinance that's in place and it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't uh, deprive them of a substantial right to follow those ordinances. Uh, it's basically him trying to build a, a very substantial garage on a 50 by 120 lot. 
that comes very close to my client's property and uh, there's a trench dug along there and she's concerned about obviously uh, my client at 4123 Jermaine Avenue about what if any effect that's going to have that's a lot of new space draining a lot right along her property line and there's already erosion that's been shown by the pictures submitted. So Mr. Henry are you changing the city's write up building housing write up about the square footage of the garage? I'm sorry. Are you challenging the building and housing write up about the square footage of the garage? I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm, I, I don't know that I, it says the, the write up that the city had for the appeal said it was appealing the 900. And when I looked at that section, it said 800. Regardless, it's a very substantial increase. It's either, as he said, you know, it's either 900 from what the appeal, the notice of appeal said, or from what I got from the city's website, which was 337.23. It said 800 square feet. Madam Chair, we have Jamie Lucas again. Sorry. Yeah, I, I I saw that. Just wanted to make sure Mr. Henry was finished. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yes. Thank you. Um. So, Madam Chair, it is forty. It is a uh, eight hundred square feet for a forty eight hundred square foot lot. Uh, for a six thousand square foot lot, it would be nine hundred square feet. If you look at the um the code, I uh, posted that in the chat. Thank yes, you. So. I, I just wanted to make sure that if that's what he was doing was challenging the write-up of the city before we move forward. Okay, so now that we, we have that rectified. Um, uh, city planning, you wanna chime in on this, please? Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, as you said, the, the attorney, Mr. Mr. Henry, must have misread the statute or didn't complete reading the statute because as, it, as uh, Ms. Lucas just pointed out, uh, for a lot of this size, you are actually entitled to 900 square foot, not 800 square foot. Um, and I believe Mr. Santiago has stated that he's only going 45 square foot over. Um, and even if, even if he was doing uh, as what uh, Building and Housing had written up at 1,000, we're talking about still a, what, 10% increase over what's allowable. Um, and I would like to point out that right next to um, Mr. The attorney's uh, client, there is a three car garage right next door to her already. Um, so there is precedent for this in this neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of other large garages. We pass these all the time. Uh, we are in full support of this project. Thank you. Uh, I, oh, I would also like to point out that the garage is is not that close to the adjacent property owner. He is asking for no uh, side yard or rear yard variances. Rick. The garage is four foot off the property line in the rear and three foot six and ten foot on the other sides. He could have been as close as 18 inches by code, but he is not. Thank you. I was going to ask for clarification on that, too. So thank you very much, Maurice. Uh, Councilman, would you like to speak now? Uh, yes, please. Um, I just uh, wanted to be on a call to support the applicant and to support the uh, position of Overwatch and Community Development Corporation and planning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, board, any questions? Uh, Madam Hear Chair, me. I, I uh, wondered if our uh, if uh, Lori, our legal um, advisor, had anything to add to this. I don't see why she would, but uh, no, I, I had put my hand up before to clarify the point that Maurice did that okay. the attorney for the neighbor did not read the statute carefully, and that nine hundred is the. Um, square footage allowed. So I have nothing more to add. Okay, Lori, I just wanted to make sure that um, you were heard if you had something to add. So, um, so Madam Chair, with that, uh, I think- We do. Uh, Madam Chair, ahead, just, th there are multiple hands raised. I'm not sure if somebody wanted to speak before, uh, including Ms. Kukla. I can't tell whose was up from previously and who wanted to make another statement. If, yeah, if you chose to care, call on them. Um, Madam Chair, if you don't mind me jumping in. Uh, go ahead. I believe that we see the inspector here, Tony Barisic, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, everyone has, everyone has to mute. It was calling user seven. 
Uh, just to let uh, everybody on the phone know, I did just mute one of you. If you need to be unmuted in the future, please hit star and then six, and the system will unmute you. Thank you. Go ahead. So, Madam Chair, back to back, back to my comments, Madam Chair. I believe that the inspector is here. So, if you have any questions about the violation notice or um, the overall construction of the garage, he's he's here for for those questions. And also, I did receive from the applicant uh, several letters, actually maybe approximately ten letters, regard uh, supporting this garage from uh, neighbors in the community. And that's all that I have. Thank you. Um, I think, yeah, the big one was the challenge of the write up of the of the square footage. Um, I believe that uh, if he was still working, that um, there would be some other testimony here. So um, I don't have any questions for the inspector unless any of the other board members do. I have no further questions, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, okay. We'll entertain. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Henry, is your hand up? I forgot we still have hands up. Yes. Sorry. Yes, my hand is still up, and, and I think that I think the board and apologize for not the area, but he's still asking for a variance, and the and the board's uh, looking and reviewing whether or not it is, is warranted in the case. The board should be looking at whether there's any difficulty or unnecessary hardship by due to following the requirements of the ordinance. And in this case, hello, it hasn't hello. presented any. Can someone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please mute your phone until your case is called. I don't, I just got in. I don't know whether or not my case has been called. What, what case are you here for? Marsha Miller, 4408 East 175th Street. Uh, we have not called that case yet. Thank you. I'll wait. Thank you. Thank okay, you. please mute your microphone. We're getting a lot of feedback. Thank you. Okay. Sorry so about that. Board, this is fine. The board needs to look at whether or not there's a practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship uh, and due to following the requirements of the ordinance before granting a variance, and also whether refusal to grant the variance would deprive the owner of substantial property rights. And that's something that I haven't, I haven't heard a appellant address. I think this could be built within the confines of the ordinances without the variance. Uh, thank you, Mr. Henry. Uh, I believe the, the appellant has told us why the garage needs to go over the allotted square footage um, to fit his cars and for extra storage. So I believe we know why he is building this. Um, does anyone else have a hand raised? Not at this point, Madam Chair. Great, I will go back to my board for any more discussion and or motion, please. Okay, Madam Chair, I'm gonna go ahead with the motion. Uh, we've heard testimony from the appellant as to the oversize of his vehicle and his need to store uh, materials for his um, annual neighborhood holiday display. We've had testimony and support from the CDC. We've had testimony and support from city council and also from city planning. Uh, so with that in mind, I move that we go ahead and approve uh, the variance of which there's only one and as city planning noted, this is not for side yard or rear yard setbacks. This is, uh, simply for square footage and uh so this is calendar number 21-158 i motion to approve I have a second please i second it barnes with the second call the roll please Ms. Cookler. thank you ms brown yes ms barnes yes ms vape yes ms Britt. yes Calendar 21-158 is granted. It'll be ratified on October 20, 25th when we meet again, and then we will send you a letter. Thank you, Mr. Santiago. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Love the decorations. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Am All I... right. I do not believe we have any other council people with us. Am I seeing that correctly? I believe you are correct. All yep. right. So let's loop back to uh, the first item on our agenda, which was calendar number 21-153 at 9412 Miles Avenue. Rhonda Johnson, owner, proposes to construct a parking lot for construction truck storage in a two-family residential zoning district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record, of which there are three. So I will turn it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. Uh, there's a little triangle over her name. She may be having bandwidth problems. At least I see that. I don't know if anybody else sees that. That's what that normally means. Due to low bandwidth, right. yes. So, Madam Chair, with your permission, I'll go ahead and administer the oath. Yes, go ahead. All right. For all those that are here to make testimony for case number 21-153, I'm going to now administer the oath. I'm going to swear you in, read the oath. You're going to raise your right hand. And then following the oath, you are going to reply, I do, and then respond with your name and your address one person at a time. So here we go. Please raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. First person. I do, Amanda Kramer, 9250 Miles Park Avenue. Thank you, Amanda. Next. I do see Rhonda Johnson online. Are you are you there, ma'am? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we, we can. We can hear you, Ms. Johnson. We Hi. need you. I swear in. I'm Rhonda yeah. Johnson. Address 4441 Hillcroft Drive. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Next. I don't see anyone else. All right. So, Madam Chair, back to you. All right, thank you. History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There has been no change in the zoning since 1929. I found that the there is a range of addresses involved in this project area. It includes 94-04 through 94-14. In the records room, I found that in 1922, a permit was issued to erect a one-story stores building. 1961, a permit was issued to change use to a tavern. 1972, a permit was issued to demolish a stores building on site. 1974, a permit was issued to erect a flower shop. There are no variances on file for this address and nothing of note in the more recent history. And that's all I have. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting a use variance and an area variance from the front yard setback requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship, particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights and the granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Johnson, go ahead, present your case. Okay, uh, good morning to everyone. Um, this property here, I own the property. I, what, I started uh, developing the property, cleaning it out and different things last year. Um, I didn't know I didn't own the whole, the other two lots. And when I got the property, I cleaned it up. I had it cleaned up. It was using it as a storage place. People was dumping their grass and different things of that nature. So when I once I found out, I went ahead and tried to move forward with trying to uh, actually use it as storage uh, for to store my dump trucks. 
I'm actually paying for storage right now and I own a property and I want to develop the land and I also want to be able to supply jobs. And I reached out to the councilman. I think he sent a letter uh, supporting me and I also reached out to the CDC for support for this particular property. Okay, can you um, talk about uh, what exactly you want to do? You did say you wanted it for storage. So we have um, three variances here that you were supposed to talk about those for a little bit. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure the three different type of variances. I know that I just wanted to store, you know, use it as a storage. I want to store my dump truck there and allow my employees to be able to park there also um why you know why you know why they work and i want to be able to use it as a parking facility as a whole and i will just want to develop the land because if you look at the land now it's i just i just want to develop the land if if i'm permitted to do so okay so we have the the site plan on the screen now do you see that yes Okay, so this is so just explain uh, briefly what you want to do here. Okay, if you look or, at it, I I, I um, had it engineered up where I have to get fence fence put all the way around it. We're six inches in the front, ten inches on the side in the back. I also put a property line area for grass grass in the area all the way around. Um, I got the proposed parking area in the center with parking um, spaces along the side. And, and, I, how many, and I, you know how many spaces that's going to be? I, I had he it's, put down 39, but it's not going to be that many. So I figured maybe okay. about it's like 40. I think it's going to be like maybe 29. Okay. Well, luckily you're not here for how many they are. So no need to worry about that. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Maurice, uh, city planning, are you speaking or someone here from? I don't believe Mark Fields is here, so I'll speak um, uh, to the applicant. Um, are you replacing the existing fences? Because if you see the, uh, I went out there uh, Friday and took some pictures of the yes. fence, and some of it is completely burned. The even yes. the chain link on the front is not in good condition. Yes. Yes. You, yes. Okay. So we would need to see what uh, some cut sheets or some examples of what exactly you're proposing to put up. Okay. Um, also, also uh, we would because we're putting a. Uh, a parking lot that's going to have construction equipment in what is actually zoned a, a two-family residential district, we would really like to screen this property as much as possible so it doesn't have any negative impacts. Um, so in, the, in uh, keeping with that, we would like to see a heavy landscape border along the front, and we don't have any detail right now on, that, on what that landscape border is. So we would need a drawing of what kind of plants and things you're going to put in there. And we also do not support the variance to park in the specific setback in the front of the property. So you'd probably have to make the, uh, you'd have to move the, uh, the parking back, I believe, two feet. Yes. Yeah, I, I I don't want parking in the front of the front of the property. A absolutely, I, I agree with you. I don't want parking in the front of the, the front of the property at all. Okay, well, we would just need revised plans and, and okay. details on those things. If that if those uh, things were were presented, uh, we would recommend approval on this project. Okay, um, example of the fencing. I'm just trying to make sure I clear examples of fencing that I'm gonna put around the uh, actual property. Uh, what type of plants and landscaping I'm going to be using? Correct. And that's you say and revise the plans, so not not to include parking in the front. It, within the front, the first eight feet of the of the property, you cannot have any parking. First eight feet. Okay. And those are my recommendations. It depends on whether uh, the board decides to adopt those re recommendations. Uh, and if they do, Ms. Kukla, I believe, will uh, send you a letter with, with, with the detailing what you'll need to provide as well. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. To Mr. Ruins, um, does city planning have a preference on decorative or black chain link fence? Um, I, I could go either way on that one. I'm, I think I would rather see the decor, a decorative metal fence across the front it would be a nicer look. Yeah, I think she has wood. 
written on here that she's doing with wood fencing. Right. That was okay. It's chain right now. It's chain link in the front, and then wood on the sides. Right. Are the are the existing conditions? I can. You can see the bottom right picture is the front of the property. Um, although that's not really in that great a shape either. So okay, wait, uh, hold, hold on, Ms. Johnson. I'm going to hear from a couple other people here and okay, then get sorry. back to you in a second. Oh, no problem. Uh, Ms. Kramer, you wanted to chime in? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, Amanda Kramer from Union Miles Development Corporation. Um, we do support this application. We have been working with Rhonda for quite some time. She's uh, jumped through a lot of hoops to try to bring this property into compliance um, to expand her business. Uh, we've been working with Kevin Schmatzer from uh, the Economic Development Department to try to get her some uh, financing options as well. So um, we support the application. It'll obviously be an improvement over the current conditions of the property. Um, and she has been very communicative with us. So uh, happy to support her. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll open it up to the board. I know um, if anyone has any more questions or uh, an entertaining motion. Looks uh, like Ms. Ms. Brown has her hand raised. Question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Um, Ms. Johnson, is your business next to uh, the lot that's going to become your parking lot? No, my business is not next to the lot at all. Okay. And are you fencing off the entire uh, parcel that you own or just the area where you plan to park the cars? I'm I plan on uh, uh, fencing off the whole entire area that is already fenced off as um, the gentleman stated. I'm just going to take this so take and put up new fence according to around the whole entire area, according to uh, code regulations. Thank you. I'm gonna fence off the whole area. Thank you. Uh, Madam chair, just to, just to point out my aerial here is a little bit wrong and misleading. The yellow box is bigger than what the actual property is on the left hand side. There's actually a land bank lot between uh, her parking lot and this, uh, the apartment building on the left hand side. So the, the yellow box is actually smaller than what's what's shown here. Yeah. Just just for clarifications. Thank you for clarifying. Sure. And it's off it, it at, like the tree, at the tree line. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor here, but yeah, yeah. right at the tree yeah. line there. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. And it does appear from the site plan, Ms. Brown, that she's she's fencing the entire the entire property. Great. Um uh Ms. Ms. Johnson, we're going to um probably move ahead with the motion now, but I'll just let you know that whatever you need to work on, I'm pretty sure the CDC can help you um get that stuff done as well. So um, I'll hand it over to my board for a motion, please. Okay, Madam Chair. So um, we'll move ahead with approval of calendar number 21-153 uh, since we have support of the uh, Union Miles CDC and the economic development folks have been working with her and uh, also with clarification from city planning. Uh, we'll need to see uh, items that city planning had mentioned. So uh, Ms. Johnson will want to see a cut sheet of the type of fencing they're going to be using. Uh, we're recommending a black decorative fencing along the front and then black uh, decorative or chain link fencing on the side and rear perimeters. Uh, we'll need to see a planting plan uh, we'll ha and uh, that will include your eight foot setback off the sidewalk as your uh, planting buffer zone. And okay. obviously that's going to re that's going to require revised plans. So you'll okay. submit all that information to uh, Mrs. Kukla. For okay. us. And with those uh, conditions, um, I move that we approve 21-153. Uh, Madam Thank Chair, you. can I just make a. I was going to make a friendly amendment to that, that we, we're not recommending chain link. Um, On the side and ever, back. We don't ever recommend chain link, um, but she will get us a cut sheet of what the type of fencing she will put there, but we won't recommend yep. chain link. 
Madam Chair, I had re I had uh, recommended uh, board on board actually for the sides and rear of the property just to provide even more screening as okay, opposed so, to the chain link. But that's so up to Miss Faith to decide if she wants that or not. Yes, thank you. So, so Miss Johnson, with discussion of the amendment of the uh, motion, uh, we're going to then uh, request that you do the black decorative fence on the front perimeter and then board on board uh, privacy fence around the rear and side perimeter. Board on board so, on the side and black decorative in the front. Okay. Right. And board on board in the back. Board on the back and sides? Yeah, back and sides and then decorative across the front. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Ms. Ms. Brown has that. her hand raised. Um, I'm, I'm not sure the technicality, but the um, variance number three we're saying no to. Correct. So how That's does correct. that? So will that be um, in the motion? Should be yes. Uh, I believe I stated that, but okay. just for clarification, uh, we will say that the setback is a six foot, <clears throat> a six feet off the um, sidewalk, and that's where the planting bed will be. No, no. eight feet. No, no eight, it has to go eight feet back. Eight feet back. Sorry, that's what I thought I said. <laughs> I'm getting confused. Okay. Okay. So let's let's recap. So we need a cut sheet. The cut sheet will show the type of fencing you're using. Okay. Black decorative across the front, board on board on the two sides and the rear. Okay. There will be a planting plan. The setback will be eight feet. And we will need revised plans. All right. Is there any further discussion? Great. I think you got it now. All right. We've covered everything. All right. Great. Can I have a second, please? Member Brown, I second. Member Brown, second. Call the roll, please, Ms. Kukla. Ms. Barnes. Hello, Ms. Barnes, yes. Thank you. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Faith? Yes. Ms. Britt. Yes. Calendar 21-153 is granted conditionally pending a revised site plan. It'll be ratified once we receive that site plan, and then we will send you a letter. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thanks to everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Bye-bye. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I do notice that uh, Councilman Jones has uh, logged in, and it just so happens that his case is up next anyway. I was going to so say he's up next. That was fortuitous. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Perfect time on Councilman Jones' part. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Oh, so, you're welcome. So here we go with calendar number 21 154. Um, and just as a point for all the attendees, we uh, extend the courtesy of uh, moving a councilman's case up to the top of the list when they're present, but he's next anyway. So calendar number 21-154 at 4408 East 175th Street. Marsha Miller, owner, proposes to erect a 29-foot, 11-inch by 11-foot, 6-inch, one-story, frame rear bedroom and kitchen addition to a an existing single family residence in an A1 one family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinance as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there is one. To you Ms. Brown. Thank you. I am swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply, I do, your name and your address. I do, Marsha Miller, 4408 East 175th Street, Cleveland 44128. I do, Councilman Joe Jones, City of Cleveland, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Madam Chair, all are sworn in. Thank you. History of the property, please. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Found that there was no change in the zoning since 1929. In our records administration office, I found that in January of 1950, a permit was issued to erect a single family house. There are no variances on file for this address. And in the more recent history, we found that in 2017, a permit was issued to uh, replace windows on the property. That's all that I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the side yard and distance requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Miller, uh, go ahead and explain to us what you'd like to do. Okay, I've lived here for the last almost 48 years. And what I'm proposing is to go straight back in my from my house, not going any closer to the other house, not violating that, it's a, well, it was already their variance. Uh, if it, we've been next to each other all these years, they've already put an addition on the back of their house which has nothing to do with mine. I mean, we're still go we're going straight back. We're going to still be the same variance, no matter what. And I am 74, and I plan to live in that home another. I'm shooting for 100. So <laughs> I need. <laughs> I, I truly need to make the bed bedroom on the first floor larger and add a bathroom. And I, my kitchen, I can barely turn around in. Uh, so I need to have a larger kitchen. So this is the, re the purpose. And I finally have reached a stage in life where I can afford to do this. And I'm asking that it j I just want to go straight back. I don't want to interfere with in that variance that exists. OK. Um Maurice uh gonna chime in here. So what I'm thinking Ms. Miller is saying is that she's using the existing footprint of her house and just adding on these extra this extra one story frame. Um is that correct? That's that's correct. what it appears to me. Yeah, she's just taking it, she's just extending out the backyard. Um yeah, that's it. This is this is an easy one. Uh, yeah. It's wonderful to see someone that's been living in the neighborhood for so long and now is going to retire in place. Uh, I'm getting up there. I understand totally the wanting the bedroom on the first floor. First floor. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we are in full support of this. I guess the only thing I would make sure I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say it before Alana has the chance to say it about making sure that the side wall <laughs> against the property line is properly fire rated. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, we wholeheartedly support this. I love seeing people, you know, fix up their house and stay in Cleveland. We need more of that. So yes, 100% support this variance. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'll ask the, the councilman to chime in. Chairwoman, I'm in full 110% support uh, of the variance change. Um, Mrs. Miller has been a outstanding citizen in our community for a very long time. And we're just so happy that she will continue to stay in place at her home that she's been there for almost 50 years. So um, the, the, we don't have any uneasiness about this. Great, thank you very much, Councilman. Uh, board, um, I'll entertain a motion unless you have any questions. I think this is very straightforward. No question, Madam Chair. Um, this is an, a, a, a bit of a challenging lot, so, um, and it's wonderful that uh, Ms. Miller is looking to age in place. Um, and uh, so uh, I think uh, with the support of city planning and their uh, preemptive comments to make sure that uh, their uh, owner is compliant with fire rating. Thank you very much, Maurice. Uh, we go ahead and approve calendar number 21 154. I have a second. Member Brown, I second. Member Brown, second. Call the roll, please, Ms. Cooper. Ms. Barnes. Ms. Barnes, yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Faith? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar 21 154 is granted. It'll be ratified on October 25th when we meet again, and we will send you a letter. 
thank you. I'm sorry we can't do it any sooner. I'm trying not to heat Cleveland, but I am going to do this. <laughs> well, good, good luck, Ms. Miller, and good luck. Good luck. To 100, yes. yes. Yeah, let's hope you make it to 100. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get there. God's good. <laughs> there That's go. the positive <laughs> attitude. There we go. Thank We're going to turn Cleveland into a blue zone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. All right. So moving on to cal uh, calendar number 21-155. At 4302 John Avenue, Terrapin Land Holdings Limited owner proposes to make interior alterations and establish use as a design and construction office in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record, of which there are two. And with that, to Ms. Brown. Okay, I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you hear or do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand and reply, I do state your name and your address. I do, Donald Pettit, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Is there anyone here from Terrapin? No one from the appellant. Madam Chair, if we could remind people to use star six if they've called in to unmute themselves. Yeah, I don't think we have any call ins. Oh, we have one. I see. Okay, well, we'll pause this until the end in case someone shows up. Um, we'll move we'll move on to West 33rd, Miss Faye. All right. So Calendar number 21-156 at 3160 West 33rd Street. LG Blanket Mills LLC owner proposes to change the use of a former industrial building to 60 dwelling units and 31,000 square feet of retail commercial space in a B2 semi-industry district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record, of which there are three. So to you, Ms. Brown. Thank you. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand and reply, I do, your name and your address. I do. Kevin Hudson, 1801, Suite 1505, Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio. I do, Matthew Box, City Planning Commission, 601 Lakeside Avenue. I do, Kristen Zolis with Metro West, 1297 West 58th Street. I do, Donald Pettit, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Okay, Madam Chair, everyone sworn in. Thank you. History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. I found that in the records room in 1923, a permit was issued to erect a factory. At that time, the owners were listed as the Northern Ohio Blanket Company and Medland Tool and Dye Company. There are no variances on file for this address. And in the more recent history, I found that in April of last year, a permit was issued to condemn a building on the site. <clears throat> in uh, June of last year, a permit was issued to demolish a two-story structure on site. And that is all that I have that is relevant. Thank you. I'm just gonna, we have some variances here. So I'm just gonna ask on call on Maurice to just give us a quick summary here. Uh, Madam Chair, do you want the legal standard first? Oh, yeah, I guess I should do that first before I ask Maurice. In my head, that was done already. Okay, go ahead. 
<laughs> I'll try to make it fast. Um, so appellant here is requesting area variances from the maximum gross floor area, minimum lot size, off-street parking, and side yard requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting of the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Sorry for skipping that, Lori. Um, okay, go ahead, Maurice. Yeah, we just have, am I mute? I'm unmuted. Okay, yeah, we just have three variances here. One is the standard um, area variance uh, for the size of the lot. Obviously, a large multi-story building is the reason why we're we're generating this area variance. Um, uh, then, of course, there's a parking variance. There are short a few uh, spaces from what is required. Uh, and then they also need a minimum five-foot street side yard. And, uh, of course, I want to point out that this is an existing building, so these side yards are already Ready in place, and that's Great. all we have. Great, thank you, Maurice. Um, uh, Mr. Hudson, are you the spokesperson for this project? Um, I'm going to turn over my my to Howard Haiti. I believe Howard's on the on the phone. Who's this speaking? This is Ke this is Kevin Hudson, but I think Howard Hayden from our architect wanted. I'm trying to figure out like, do we know? Where yeah, you sorry, this is Howard Hayden. Um, uh, I was. Apparently on mute um, you, you, earlier. You were sworn in, Mr. Hayden, so you need to be sworn in. Yeah, so as they say, I do, Howard Hayden, Demon Architects at 14414 Detroit Avenue. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, so just kind of to summarize the project, we uh, received um, the SPAC 50 uh, award um, in 2019. Um, and this is a proposed renovation of the existing historic building to uh, 60 apartments on the second and third floors in the ground floor commercial tenant. Um, the site, there was the Connecting Cleveland 2020 citywide plan actually highlights this property um, as a uh, conversion or as a targeted site for multifamily development. Um, so uh, I believe that was kind of Vote for our um, positive development um, in addressing section or uh, bullet point one here. Um, so, yeah, so we're proposing to um, renovate the building, and then there is a existing parking lot um, along West 33rd Street in St. Broncos Court um, that we are going to kind of resurface, add in permeable paving, and to a new uh, decorative fence at the perimeter um, that's already been through the design review uh, approval process. Um, so I guess with that, we've received a kind of full city support um, throughout the uh, design review and entitlement process on this. Um, and we currently uh, have documents in, uh, in for uh, plan review. Um, Pending, pending the approvals on these uh, three variances. I guess I can speak to any questions that the um, that the board may have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to call on uh, Kristen at Metro West. Uh, yes, I do want to first make the disclaimer that we are a co-developer on this project. Um, okay. But we don't see any issues, especially with parking. It is right on Fulton Road, which is. Uh, public transportation. Um, so we think that takes care of some of the parking issues. And then, um, as you said, it's a pre existing building. So uh, some of the other variances they're requesting, uh, we, we do support those. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pettit and Landmarks. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the Landmarks Commission approved a certificate of appropriateness for this project on January 28th of this year. Uh, we strongly support the project. Uh, the building is on the National Register of Historic Places. They're seeking historic uh, federal and state historic tax credits. Uh, this is exactly the kind of project that we were hoping would come to pass when we designated it in uh, 2009. So we have no objection to the variances and we support the project. Thank you. Uh, Matt Moss. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Matt Moss with the Cleveland City Planning Commission. Uh, in many ways, you could also say the city is a co-developer of this project. Uh, like Howard Hayden mentioned, uh, this project was selected for funding through the city's FAC 50 program. That's a program of, of the state of Ohio, but the city selected Clark Fulton as a target neighborhood to invest uh, low-income housing tax credit funding directly from the state. And so in many ways, we are a partner in this project too, in terms of funding the rehabilitation. So fully support these variances as they're being requested today. Thank you. Um, I only have Mr. Hudson left on my list. Did you have anything else you wanted to add or? No, we, uh, you know, surely appreciate the, the, the time to appear before the board today. Uh, appreciate, um, you know, Metro, you know, our partners in this, um, Metro West and the city of Cleveland coming in and, 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 and voicing their support of the project. Um, you know, we're looking forward to you know, starting this later this year, getting all of our financing in place and, and, and be able to try to, you know, take the largest vacant property in the Clark Fulton neighborhood and return it back to, to useful life. That That's truly the goal is, is to benefit the, you know, the, the neighborhood with, with services and housing that, that, you know, support the, the, the current residents in the neighborhood. Great, thank you. Uh, Board, open it up to you. Uh, Madam Chair, I have no questions. Uh, it seems this project has got the wholehearted support of uh, stakeholders on multiple levels. So uh, should be a real asset to the neighborhood. So with that, I move that we go ahead and approve calendar number 21-156 for approval. Thank you. Can I have a second? Mem Member Brown, Brown I, I second. Member Brown, second. Go ahead, call the roll, please, Ms. Cooper. Ms. Barnes? Barnes, yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Faith? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar 21-156 is granted. It'll be ratified on October 25th, and we will send you a letter. Thank you. Thank you. Seems like a great project. Good luck, everyone. Yeah. Look Thank forward you. to seeing this. We are, too. <laughs> Madam Chair, that concludes our cases for the day, unless we have... Uh... Yeah, last call for uh, calendar number 21-155, John Avenue. Anyone here? Going once? Going twice. Dismissed without objection, board. Without objection. All right. That's old it. business? Yeah, do we have any old business? Yep, sorry, getting that screen up for you right now. Oh, I don't have any old business. Ms. Kukla never sent me the old business. I have 1214 on our agenda. Okay, that's what I have. Okay, well, 1214 without objection, board. I did say without the brief. What are you talking about? Without <laughs> objection. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And I am without objection as well. Okay. I believe that's it then. Yep. We are officially adjourned. Good job right. everyone today. Way to get it in an hour. Yep. Gotta like that. Wow. We really did. And yeah. that is with two council people present. So yay. All righty. Well, everyone well, have we a good week. Yes, ma'am. You too. No bouncing around. So we're um we will uh we do not have a quorum next week, correct? That's okay. correct.